Just like before, Sarah felt the changes before she saw them. As soon as she woke, she reached up and touched her nose. Oh, there's the highlight. <laughs> she felt not a potato-like bulb, but a pert little point. She ran her hands over the sides of her face and felt clearly defined cheekbones. She touched her lips and found them plumper than before. She hopped out of bed to take a look. It was amazing. The person looking back at Sarah was a totally different person than before. Eleanor was right. It was shocking. But it was a good kind of shock. Everything she had hated about her appearance was gone and had been replaced by absolute perfection. Her eyes were wide and a deeper blue and fringed with a long sooty lashes. Her eyebrows were delicate arches, her nose was tiny and perfectly straight, and her lips were a pink cupid's bow. Her hair, while still brown, was fuller and shinier and fell into pretty soft waves. She looked herself up and down, she smiled at herself with her straight white teeth. Beautiful. She was the total package. She surveyed the clothes in her closet. None of them seemed worthy of her new beauty. Maybe when mom took her shopping for bras, they could also pick out a few outfits. After a lot of deliberation, she finally chose a red dress she'd bought on a whim, but could never find the courage to wear. Now though, she deserved to be the centre of attention. School was a totally new experience. She could feel everybody's eyes on her, guys and girls alike. When she looked at the beautifuls, who also happened to be wearing red today, they looked back at her, not with dis disdain, but with interest. At lunch, she mouthed hi at Abby, then walked straight to where the beautifuls were sitting. This time, she didn't sit right down oh, at their table, but made a show of casually wandering past it. Hey, new girl, Lydia called. You want to sit with us? She wasn't remotely a new girl to the school, but she was a new girl in her looks. Sure, thanks, she said. She tried to sound casual like it didn't make any difference to her whether she sat with them or with somebody else. But inside she was so excited she was turning cartwheels. All the beautifuls were eating salads just like she was. So, Lydia said, what's your name? Sarah. She had hoped... <laughs> Sarah. Sarah. She had hoped Sarah was a name they found acceptable. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't like Hilda or Bertha or something. I'm Lydia. Lydia tossed her lustrous blonde hair. She was so pretty. Pretty enough to be a model. She would fit right in with the pictures of the walls on Sarah's room. And this is Gillian, Tabitha, and Emma. They knew no introduction, of course, but Sarah said hi like she had never seen them before. So, Lydia said, who's your dress by? Sarah had watched enough fashion shows on TV to know Lydia was asking about the designer. It's from Saks Fifth Avenue, she said. It was true, the label of the dress did read Saks Fifth Avenue. However, Sarah and her mum had brought it at the local thrift store. Her mum was so excited when they found it. She loved thrifting. How often do you get to New York? Lydia asked. Once or twice a year, Sarah lied. She had been to New York once when she was 11. She and her mum had seen a Broadway show, ridden a ferry to the Statue of Liberty, and gone up in the Empire State Building. They had done no shopping in fancy stores. The only clothing Sarah had bought was an I Love New York t-shirt at a souvenir shop. A few washings had worn it as thin as tissue paper, but she still slept in it sometimes. So Sarah, Emma said, regarding her with doe-like brown eyes. What do your mom and dad do for a living? Sarah tried to not bristle risibly at the word dad. Mom's a social worker and dad... Before her dad had left Sarah and her mum, he had been a long-distance truck driver. Now, she wasn't even sure what he did or where he lived. He moved a lot, changed girlfriends a lot. He called her on Christmas and her birthday. He's... he's a lawyer. The beautiful was nodded their approval. One more question. This came from Gillian, the redhead with the cat-like green eyes. Do you have a boyfriend? Sarah felt her face heat up. Mm, no, no, not at the moment. Well, Gillian said, leaning forward, is there a boy you like? Sarah knew her face had to be as red as her dress. Yes, Gillian smiled. And his name is? Sarah looked around to make sure he wasn't nearby. Mason Blair, she half whispered. Oh, he's hot, Gillian said. Definitely hot, Lydia echoed. 
hot, the other girls repeated like a chorus. So, Lydia said, looking Sarah over, don't follow us around like a puppy dog or anything, but if you want to sit with us at lunch, then sit. On Sunday afternoons, we go to the mall and try on clothes and makeup. Maybe get a froyo. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, it's... Ooh, the thingy's gone weird. It's lame, but it's something to do. This town's so boring. She yawned theatrically. So boring, Sarah agreed. But inside, she was buzzing with excitement. Lydia nodded. We'll hang out a little and see how things go. If it works out, maybe you can go for out maybe you can go out for cheerly the next year. Consider this a trial period. Sarah left the cafeteria smiling to herself. Abby caught up to her. It uh looked like you were having some kind of intense job interview back there, Abby said. She was wearing grey sweatpants with a bulky purple sweater that did nothing to show off her shape. Yeah, kind of. They invited me to hang out though, so I guess I passed the test. She couldn't stop herself from smiling. Abby raised an eyebrow. And those are the kinds of friends you want? The kind that make you pass the test? They're cool, Abby. They know all about fashion and makeup and guys. They're shallow, Sarah. They're as shallow as a rain puddle. No, I take that back. They're so shallow, they make a rain puddle look like the ocean. Sarah shook her head. She loved Abby. She really did. But why did she have to be so judgmental? But they rule the school. That's how it works. It's the beautiful people who get what they want. She looked at Abby's gorgeous brown complexion at her striking hazel eyes. You could be beautiful too, Abby. You'd be the prettiest girl in the school if you lost the glasses and braids and bought some clothes that weren't so baggy. If I didn't wear my glasses, I'd be walking into walls, Abby said with a little edge in her voice. And I like my braids and my baggy clothes, especially this sweater. It's cosy. She shrugged her shoulders. I guess I just like myself the way I am. Sorry if I'm not fancy or fashionable enough for you. I'm not like the cheerleaders or all those models and pop stars whose pictures you have plastered all over your room. But you know what? I'm a nice person. And I don't judge people on how they look or how much money they have. And I don't have to give a person a pop quiz to decide if I'll let them hang out with me or not. Abby looked at Sarah's face searchingly. You have changed, Sarah. And not for the better. Abby turned her back on Sarah and marched down the hall. Sarah knew Abby was a little mad at her, but she also knew an apology and a hug would fix things once she'd had some time to cool down. After the bell walking towards the school bus, Sarah became suddenly aware of a presence beside her. Hey, a male voice said. She turned to see Mason Blair, looking perfect in a blue shirt that brought out the colour of his eyes. Oh, hi. So, Lydia said you guys were talking about me in the cafeteria today. Well, I, uh, uh, Sarah fought the urge to run. Say, if you don't have anything else to do, do you want to go over to the brown cow and have a cone with me? <laughs> I'm sorry for these voices. <laughs> um, Sarah smiled. She could hardly believe her good luck today. I don't have anything else to do. The brown cow was basically a little concrete block shed that sold uh, soft serve ice cream and milkshakes. It was right across the street from school, but Sarah usually resisted the temptation of stopping there since she had always been worried about their weight, uh, about her weight. <laughs> uh, she stood next to Mason at the counter where the same bored seeming old lady always took orders. Chocolate, vanilla, or swirl? He asked her. Swirl, she said, making a move to open her purse. No, Mason said, putting up his hand. I got it. It's a cheap date. I can handle it. Thanks. He had said date. It was it was a real date. Sarah's first. They sat across from each other at the picnic table. Mason attacked his cone with gusto. Is that how I pronounce that? Because <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's with gusto? Nah. With gusto. I'm going to say gusto, the character from Ratatouille. <laughs> Mason attacked his cone with gusto, but um, that's definitely not right. But Sarah took tiny licks. She didn't want to eat like a pig in front of Mason, and she was afraid of the ice cream dripping on her dress and making her look like a slob. Even with her self-consciousness, though, she had to admit the cold, creamy treat was delicious. I haven't had ice cream in ages, she said. Why is that? Mason said. Watching your weight? Sarah nodded. 
No need to worry about that, Mason said. You look great, it's funny. You've been going to school, to the school a long time, right? I don't know how I only just noticed you. Sarah felt herself blushing. You noticed me when I ran into you with that salad, right? Mason looked at her with his dark lashed ocean blue eyes. I didn't notice you then the way I should have. I clearly need to pay better attention. Me too, Sarah said, so I don't keep plowing into people with trays of salad. Mason laughed, showing those gorgeous white teeth. Sarah was amazed by how confident her new looks made her feel. She could eat ice cream with a cute guy and make jokes with him. The old Sarah would have been much too shy. Not that a cute guy would have asked the old Mrs. Mix and Match Sarah out for ice cream in the first place. Once they'd finished their cones, Mason said, Hey, is your house pretty close? I could walk you back if you like. Sarah felt a twinge of anxiety. Mason's dad was a doctor and his mum was a successful real estate agent whose face was plastered on billboards. His family probably lived in a mansion on the fancy side of town. She wasn't ready for him to walk with her past the garbage dump to the plain little two-bedroom bungalow she, said she shared with her living from paycheck to paycheck single mum. Uh, I actually have to run a couple of errands this afternoon. M maybe another time? Uh, sure, okay. Was it Sarah's imagination or did he look kind of disappointed? He looked down at his shoes, then back up at Sarah. Hey, maybe we could go out for real sometime. Pizza and a movie, maybe? Sarah was pretty sure her heart had just turned a backflip. I'd like that. His expression brightened. How about this Saturday night? If you're free, of course. Sarah fought the urge to laugh. Had there ever been a Saturday night when she wasn't free? Um. What? What? <laughs> uh. Okay, it looks like the formatting's gone weird here. So it might have skipped like a tiny bit, but you you can tell what's happening. Um, Sarah flopped down on the bed and propped herself up on a pillow. I hardly know where to start. The beautifuls let me sit at their table at lunch, and then they invited me to meet them at the mall on Sunday. Eleanor nodded. That is good news, Sarah. Sarah leaned forward and hugged the old Freddy Fazbear teddy bear on her bed. And then Mason Blair took me for ice cream after school and asked me to dinner and a movie on Saturday. That's very exciting. Eleanor stepped closer to Sarah, bent at the waist, and touched Sarah's cheek. Is he a handsome boy, Sarah? Sarah nodded. She couldn't stop smiling. Yes, very. Are you happy, Sarah? Sarah laughed and repeated. Yes, very. Have I given you everything you wished for? Sarah couldn't think of a single other wish. She was beautiful and perfect, and her life was beautiful and perfect to match. Yes, you have. Then I have everything I wished for, too. Eleanor said, but remember, even though all your wishes are granted, the necklace still has to stay on. You can never take it off, I remember, Sarah said. She was always tempted to ask Eleanor what would happen if she took it off, but part of her was afraid to know the answer. Making you happy makes me happy, Sarah, Eleanor said. Sarah felt tears welling in her newly beautiful blue eyes. She knew she'd never have a better friend than Eleanor. On Saturday, Sarah was a ball of nervous energy. From the moment she woke up, all she could do, or all she could think about was the date. At breakfast, she was too nervous to eat much, even though Mum had made French toast, Sarah's favourite. You'll drive me to the pizza place and drop me at six, right? She said. Whoa! I just realised. The pizza place. <laughs> That's a name. Uh, it's not really a name because it's not a proper noun, but whatever. There's no capitals. Um, of course, Mum said, flipping through the newspaper. And you'll just drop me, right? You won't walk in with me or anything? Mum smiled. I promise I will not endanger your relationship by letting your new beau ca catch a glimpse of my horrifying face. Sarah laughed. It's not that, Mum. You're really pretty, actually. It's just that it looks kind of a little kiddish when your mum comes in with you, you know? I know, Mum said sipping her coffee. I was 14 too once, believe it or not. Did you ride your dinosaur when you went out on dates? Sarah asked. Sometimes, Mum said. 
but usually I'd just invite the boy over to hang out in the family cave. She reached over and ta uh, tussled Sarah's hair. Don't be too much of a smart aleck, or I might decide I'm too old and decrepit to drive you tonight. Have you figured out what you're going to wear? At this question, Sarah let out a dramatic moan. Oh, I can't decide. I mean, it's just a pizza and a movie, so I don't want to dress like it's the most important event of my life, but at the same time, how I look is really important. So, wear jeans and a nice shirt. You're a beautiful girl, Sarah. You'll look great in whatever you choose. Thanks, Mom. She remembered what Eleanor had said about mothers always thinking their children were beautiful. She knew that her mom would have said the same thing to her, even before she got Eleanor's help. Oh no, here's the downfall. <laughs> um, oh yeah, see, it's, it's not the pizza plates, it's the pizza palazzo. When Sarah's mom pulled into the parking lot of the pizza palazzo, Sarah's stomach was so full of butterflies that she couldn't imagine there would be any room for pizza. She knew she looked nice though, so that was some comfort. Text me when the movie's over and I'll come get you, Mum said. She reached over and squeezed Sarah's hand. And have fun. I'll try, Sarah said. Until recently, the idea of going out with Mason Blair would have been as realistic as the idea of her going out with a major pop star. It had been a fantasy, something she dreamed of but never imagined would come true. Why was she so nervous when this was something she'd wanted for so long? Maybe that's what was making her nervous, the fact that she wanted it so much. But then she walked through the doorway of the pizza palazzo and saw Mason waiting for her in front of the hostess's station and she immediately felt more at ease. He looked up and flashed his gorgeous smile. Hi, you look great, he said. Thanks. She did think the turquoise top she'd chosen went well with her eyes. You do too. He was dressed casually in a hoodie and a t-shirt for some video game, but he would look great in anything. After they got settled at one of the red leather booths with matching checkered tablecloths, Mason picked up a menu and said, So what kind of pizza person are you? Thin crust? Thick crust? Any favourite toppings? I'm a flexible pizza person, Sarah said. Despite her earlier nervousness, she was actually starting to feel hungry. I, I pretty much like pizza in general, except for one thing. No pineapple on pizza, ever. Agreed, Mason said, laughing. Pineapple on pizza is an abomination. It should be illegal. I'm glad we agree on that, Sarah said. If we hadn't, I probably would have just had to walk out of here and abandon you. Uh, my opinion on this topic is invalid because I have never tried pineapple on pizza. I would be open to try it, but it doesn't sound great. <laughs> I've had worse, I think. Um, whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I completely lost track of uh, my thoughts. Uh, and I would have totally deserved it, Mason said. People who eat pineapple on pizza deserve to be alone. That's a bit far. Uh, they agreed on a thin crust pepperoni and mushroom pizza, and they chatted comfortably about their families and their hobbies as they ate. Mason had a lot of interests, and Sarah realised she probably didn't have enough of them. Before Eleanor, she had spent too much of her free time worrying about her appearance. Now that that problem was solved, she needed to branch out a little, listen to more music, read more books, maybe take up yoga or swimming. As a little kid, Sarah had loved swimming, but once she hit middle school, she was too self-conscious to let anybody see her in a swimsuit. By the time she and Mason walked next door to the movie theatre, Sarah felt like they were getting to know each other pretty well. He wasn't just cute, he was nice and funny too. And in the dark theatre when he reached over and took her hand in his, it was the most perfect moment of a perfect night. When she got back home and was putting on her nightgown, Eleanor quietly strolled up behind her and put her hand on her shoulder. Sarah was startled but quickly recovered. Hi, Eleanor, she said. Hello, Sarah. How is your date? she asked. Sarah felt a smile spreading on her face just from thinking about it. It was great, she said. He's gorgeous, but I also really like him as a person, you know. He asked me if I wanted to go into the basketball game with him next week. I'm not interested in basketball, but I'm definitely interested in him, so I'll go. Eleanor laughed her, tiny, uh, her tinny giggle. So tonight, was it everything you'd hoped it would be? Sarah smiled at her robotic friend. It was even better. I'm happy you're happy, Eleanor said, then moved back to a spot in the corner. Good night, Sarah. 
In the morning, Sarah found her mum in the laundry room. Could you drive me to the mall to meet my friends this afternoon? She asked. Mum looked up from unloading the dryer and smiled. You're quite the social butterfly this weekend. What time are you supposed to meet them? She folded a towel and set it in the laundry basket. They just said in the afternoon, Sarah said. That's pretty vague, isn't it? Mum said, folding another towel. I don't know. The, the way they said it, it kind of felt like I should know what they meant. She was so shocked to be accepted, even on a trial period, by the beautifuls that she was afraid to ask questions. Your new friends expect you to be psychic? Mum said. You don't like my new friends, do you? Sarah said. I don't know your new friends, Sarah. I just know they were, they were girls who wouldn't give you the time of day before and now they're suddenly inviting you to hang out with them. It's kind of strange. I mean, what's changed? I've changed, Sarah thought. Just look at me. But she said, maybe they just finally decided I'm a likeable person. Yeah, but what took them so long? Mum said. You know what friend of yours I like? Abby. She's smart and she's kind and she's straightforward. You always know where to stand with a person like Abby. Sarah didn't want to tell her mum that she and Abby weren't speaking to each other currently. So instead, she said, two o'clock. How about you take me to the mall at two o'clock? Okay. Mum tossed a towel at her. There's a typo there. <laughs> Sorry, I... I... Mum tossed at towel at her. Uh, now help me fold. Once Sarah had got dropped at the mall, she realised that Lydia hadn't said anything about where to meet them either. The mall wasn't that large, but it was big enough to turn searching for them into a fairly difficult game of hide and seek. She could text Lydia, she supposed, but it kind of felt like in order to be, expect to be accepted by the group, she had to figure out the way they did... Sorry. The way they did things without making a nuisance of themselves. <coughs> Apologies. Um... If she was only accepted into the group on a trial period, she didn't want to make any missteps. One false move and she would be back to eating lunch at the loser table. That's a bit harsh. After a few moments of thought, she decided to head to Dillers, the mall's most expensive department store. The beautifuls definitely wouldn't be hanging out somewhere cheap. Her intuition was good. She found them at the front of the store in the cosmetics section, trying on lipsticks. Sarah, you made it. I forgot the voice. <laughs> Uh, Lydia said, giving her a crimson-lipped smile. As soon as Lydia smiled at her, the other girl smiled too. Hi, Sarah said, smiling back. She really had made it, hadn't she? And not just to the mall. She had good looks, a gorgeous nice boyfriend, and the friendship of the most beautiful girls in the school. She could never have predicted that her life would be this good. Oh, Sarah, you should try on this lipstick, Gillian said, holding out a golden tube. It's pink with sparkles. It would look perfect with your skin tone. Sarah took the tube, leaned over the makeup counter mirror and smoothed on the lipstick. It really was pretty on her. It matched the rosy nail polish that never seemed to fade from her fingers and toes. It looks like lipstick... Wait. Who's saying this? <laughs> it looks like lipstick a princess would wear, she said, studying her reflection with pleasure. It really does, Tabitha said, opening up a tube in a different colour. Her Royal Highness, Princess Sarah. You should totally get it, Lydia said, looking at her approvingly. Sarah tried to subtly check the price on the, lipsticking, uh, on the lipstick packaging. Forty dollars. She hoped her shock didn't show. That was more than she'd paid for the outfit she was wearing. But then again, she probably couldn't buy lipstick in a thrift, shore, uh, in a thrift store. I'll think about it, she said. Oh, go on, treat yourself. I want to browse around a little more first, Sarah said. Since I just got here, she didn't want to admit the only money she had in her purse was enough to cover a frozen yogurt and a soda. The beautifuls, however, bought lipsticks and eyeshadows and blush and brow pencils, whipping out wads of cash or their parents' credit cards. After they finished at the makeup counter, they went to look at formal gowns, because, as Lydia put it, prom's just around the corner. Isn't it just for juniors and seniors? Sarah asked. It's for juniors and seniors and their dates, Lydia said. So if you want, so if you can find a junior or a senior to take you, then it's just around the corner, she nudged Sarah. Too bad Mason's not older. Yeah, Sarah said, but she didn't mean it. She liked Mason the age he was.
Besides, she wasn't sure she was ready to date an older guy. The dresses really were beautiful. They were the colour of jewels, amethyst, sapphire, ruby, emerald. Some were sparky, others were satin smoothie and sh uh, smooth and shiny, and others were translucent with lace and tulle. They took turns trying on dresses and modelling them in front of the mirror and taking pictures of one another with their phones. After half an hour of watching them with the sour expression on her face, a sales lady came over and asked, Were you girls actually interested in buying anything, or are you just playing dress up? They ditched the dresses and fled the formal wear department, giggling. I don't think that sales lady liked us very much, Jillian said as they walked out of the store. Who cares, Lydia said, laughing. She doesn't get to judge me. She just works in a store. She makes minimum wage if she's lucky. I bet she can't even afford to buy the clothes she sells. Who asked? <laughs> really, who asked? They went to the food court and ate frozen yogurts and laughed about how naughty they'd been. I just realized I've been saying yogurts. A lot of you guys will be saying yogurt. <laughs> um because Americans. Um, do you girls intend to buy anything or are you just paying dress up? Lydia said over and over again, mimicking the sales lady. They all laughed and Sarah laughed right along with them, even though she thought they might have been a little hard on the sales lady who's just trying to do her job. Jillian and Emma had left the dresses they'd tried on in crumpled piles on the dressing room floor. Now the sales lady probably had to clean up after them. But who was she to criticise the beautifuls? It was an honour that they invited her out with them. It was glamorous and exciting, like she was a guest on a reality TV show. No matter what they said or did, she was happy just to be included. Yesterday, her date with Mason had been perfect and now she got to be out with the beautifuls. How could she ever express her gratitude to Eleanor? Nothing she could say would ever be enough. That night, when Eleanor sprang to life, Sarah jumped up and hugged the robot's hard little body. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you for a perfect weekend. You're welcome, Sarah. Eleanor hugged her back. And as always, the sensation was odd. There was no softness in her hug. It's the least I could do. You've given me so much. Sarah settled down happily to sleep, but her rest was disturbed by a strange dream. She was on a date with Mason sitting in the movie theatre, but when he reached over to hold her hand, it was not his hand she grasped, but Eleanor's, tiny, white, metallic and cold, the same hand she had grabbed to pull the robot girl out of the car trunk. When she turned to look at Mason in the seat next to her, he had changed into Eleanor. Eleanor smiled, revealing a mouthful of sharp teeth. In the dream, Sarah screamed. She opened her eyes to find Eleanor standing over her bed, her head lowered, staring at her with her blank green eyes.